Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see everyone here this evening. Let's all stand. As we're preparing to enter into a worship service, let's just greet one another, shake hands, and be friendly for just a few moments. Let somebody know you appreciate them tonight. Let's just take a few moments. We'll pray as we start service tonight. Lord, we are grateful again to be back in your house. Lord, I'm so thankful for another opportunity to praise and worship your name. Lord, I pray right now that you would anoint the efforts of this group as we come together to worship and praise your name. I pray that your presence will be here. God, let your spirit minister. Have your way in this place. We offer ourselves to you right now that your perfect will be done. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. Let's clap our hands right now before the Lord. Let's welcome him into this place. Let's all worship him tonight as we sing. Come on, let's put our hands together here tonight. Yeah, praise be to God who 
begin to worship him in this place right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I am free no matter how I feel, no matter what I see. Your word is my authority in every season of life. So as for me and my house, we're going to be free. I will stand up and fight for my freedom. I will stand up and take what belongs.
Come on, just for a minute, with no music or no singing, can we just begin to worship the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings? God, I worship you and I lift you up. Oh, I praise your holy name, Jesus. Oh, I worship you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, this might be a little bit out of order, but can we have a prayer service just for the next two to three minutes? God, I love you. God, I worship you. Oh, God, I lift you up. There is none like you. Oh, thank you, God, for all that you are and all that you do. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Mighty God, I don't want to let an opportunity pass me by where I can reach the Holy of Holies. I don't want an opportunity to pass me by where I can touch God, where I can touch the hem of His garment. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh hallelujah.
hallelujah. Come on, can you hear him calling out your name to come to him tonight? Oh, hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, I need the Lord tonight. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. If our ushers will help us, we'll be receiving this evening's offering. Praise the Lord. Didn't this praise team do a good job singing tonight? Aren't you thankful for such talented folks leading us in worship? Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. There's a reason that I don't sing, because them folks are just so much better than I am, right? Amen. Good singers, great folks. We appreciate them and all their abilities and talents. Amen. It's good to see everyone in God's house. So thankful that you are in church tonight. So thankful that you've made plans to be here tonight. Uh, it's good to see all of our faithful saints again, but especially to our guests. We want to welcome you. Bethlehem Church, can we welcome our guests tonight? Amen. 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 We're so thankful that you're here. We want to invite you back as often as you can be. We want to let you know we appreciate you being here tonight. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer right now. don't have any needs that have been turned in, but I'm sure there are many needs across this congregation. You can uplift your hand to represent that tonight and believe God to do great things in, the, in this place. Let's go to Him in prayer right now over all these needs and, and for the remainder of this service. Lord, we are so thankful again to be in Your house. So grateful, God, for the many wonderful things that You've done in our life. God, You've done miracles and signs and wonders so many times. We pray that you'd do it one more time over all these needs, Lord. There's so many different situations, but we believe you to be God Almighty. All things are possible through you, and we put it in your hands right now. We'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. I also pray that you'd move in the remainder of this service. Let your anointing to continue to move, touch, and minister. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to ask that if you're able, that you would bring your offering tonight. March, as the ushers lead you, bring your offering tonight as unto the Lord.
Lord, can you say, I love you, Jesus? Can you say that out loud tonight? Tell him how much you love him, how wonderful he is, how mighty he is, how great he is. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank the Lord. God bless you. Remain standing. You that aren't standing, if you will, stand in honor to the man of God with the word of God. Praise God. God, my Lord, what a great crowd here tonight. Raining outside and raining inside, isn't it? Holy Ghost rain inside. You feel that? Hey, Amen. All you need to do is let your umbrella down. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see some that haven't been able to be with us for a while. God bless you and maybe some newcomers. My, it's good to see you here. The church is growing. The church is doing wonderful. Thank the Lord. I was visiting, visiting with the sheriff this week. You know, some four weeks ago or so, he had a terrible automobile accident. It almost took him out into eternity, but uh, he survived it. Uh, has the big halo all the way down to his chest, and uh, but it really looked great. Really looked great. He wanted me to tell. Bethlehem Church, that he is going to have full recovery, going to be back out there working and looking forward to that time. Just in a few more weeks, hallelujah, that's right. You might say some more prayers for him as you, from day to day, that the Lord will continue to help him. Amen. Wow, what preaching we had this morning. If you were in the Sunday school department and were not here then I would say you ought to get that DVD or CD, take it home with you, listen to it, and then buy, give it to some of your family uh, that, uh, that really needs God. I mean, a great message. And you others that were here, uh, in fact, uh, one of our new converts, he said, I got that, I'm getting that DVD or CD for my parents to hear. And ta- a new convert said that, and taking it home so they can, so his family can see it. And uh, so, if a new convert can do that, you older ones can do that. Isn't that right? Amen. You know, I, we are so blessed here to have such awesome preaching from such a great pastor, great man of God. Uh, I'm, I'm I was just thinking a little bit ago, he. Uh, we, we hear conference preaching, camp meeting preaching. Every time our pastor comes up here to preach, we have camp meeting preaching and conference preaching. Make him welcome one more time, Pastor Voskis and the Lord. Bless you. Give the Lord praise tonight. God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. The Bible said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The book of Psalms says, let us give him the glory that is due his name. So why don't you praise him however good you think his name is tonight. Amen. We're going to go to the book of Judges, chapter number 21. Book of Judges, chapter number 21, verses 19 through 21. Judges 21, 19 through 21. Amen. There's a lot of things going on. We've announced several of them. There's a missions banquet. And somewhere, somewhere around here, there's a sign-up if you'd like to go to the missions banquet. The tickets are $25 for meal, and that includes entertainment that night. And uh, all of that money is going to help missions. Matter of fact, it's going to, I believe it's going to help uh, children in Uganda at our orphanage that we have there. Uh, They don't have the resources to give them the vaccinations that they need. So many of the children are getting things like malaria and different different sicknesses. And uh, I believe that that missions banquet is going to help with that endeavor. So if you would like to be a blessing uh, to that, We have several hundred orphans that we help support through our fellowship, and uh, you can be a part of that. It's the 26th of April, 
and we need to know ASAP so they can make preparations for the food and things of that nature. It's going to be a fun time for our district, and we're going to have a good time there. And uh, if you need any more information on that, you can see Sister Courtney Sanford, and uh, she can give you some more details. Uh, we have a, uh, a lot of great things happening, and uh, I'm excited about the great things that God is doing. We have a great Easter planned, and God's doing some great things, opening doors. I believe we're going to have one of the greatest crowds that we've ever had at Bethlehem Church on Easter, and we certainly need you to be involved and to help. We have an outreach coming up this weekend. Uh, we're putting out door hangers. On, uh, we're going to try to get as many doors as we can in our community. And we also have an outreach on the Friday and Saturday before Easter, as we do regularly. And we can use your help for that. We're going to need help with usher staff. We're going to need help with greeter staff. We're going to need help parking cars. We're going to need help in a lot of areas. And uh, we certainly uh, would hope that, that you'll be willing to help us and to do the work of the Lord. And I heard that we had some great preaching Wednesday night from Brother Evan. Amen. Amen. And uh, I heard so many great reports and, uh, and from so many different people and uh, thankful for that and uh, excited about what the Lord is doing. And you know, when you go to a church that still preaches and teaches repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, anything is liable to happen because where the truth is preached, miracles happen. And I'm glad I'm in that kind of a church. I'm glad I've been born again the Bible way. Amen. Amen. If you're happy you got the Holy Ghost, why don't you praise God for it right now? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The book of Judges, chapter number 21, verses 19 through 21. Judges 21, verses 19 through 21. A message the Lord began dealing with my heart about. Uh, actually, while I was mowing the grass... 10 days ago or so, needs it again, if it quit raining, we'll, I'll get it again, but uh, the Lord began to deal with me about it and open some things up in my spirit, and, uh, and I feel like the Lord wants me to preach it tonight, the book of Judges, chapter number 21, verses 19 through 21, if you found it, say praise the Lord, then they said, behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh. Yearly in a place which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel, to Shechem and on the south of Lebona. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie in wait in the vineyards. And see and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances, then come ye out of the... In, and then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. Verse 21, and behold, if the daughters, everybody say if, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances, then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife. Everybody say wife. If the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances, then come out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife. I want to preach for a little while tonight on this subject. The bride dances. The bride dances. Look at somebody and tell them the bride dances. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit, for your presence and your power, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that I have certainly felt in this place. As we worship your great name, God, I have felt your power in this house. I pray, God, for an anointing of your spirit to restore hearts toward you. I pray, God, that you would touch our mind and our spirit with a fresh anointing, with a fresh desire for your presence. I pray that you would anoint me to speak the word. And, God, I pray that your word would draw hearts to you. 
And God, in spite of what I say, it's your presence that makes all the difference. So I'm asking you to be the difference tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise and lift your voice as you're being seated tonight. Let me make a few statements to establish a couple of thought processes before I get into the particular theme of the message that the Lord has laid on my heart for tonight. Let me start off by saying that dead religion is an affront to a living and true God. Furthermore, let me add to that that half-hearted worship is an insult to the Savior who gave His full measure at Calvary. Somebody told me right before I stepped up, don't be shy, just preach. I said, well, I don't think, I, I think my shyness has been going away. So let me add to that a little bit more and say that ho-hum praise is an embarrassment to the one who offers it and a slight to the God for whom it was intended. True praise is born of a thankful heart that realizes that if it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? I am not a puppet on a string that God forces to worship. I am not a slave that must act or be punished. But I am born of a free will. And the God of all creation has afforded me the option to worship Him if I choose to do so. And may I say tonight that I have chosen to be a worshiper. I choose to praise Him who laid down His life for me on an old rugged cross. Oh yes, because I have found in Him a true friend. I have found no fault in Him. He is my rock, my redeemer, and my very present help in the time of trouble. The Bible allegorically refers to the church as the bride of Christ. It is from the Song of Solomon expressing the metaphorical picture of the relationship of the bride to her groom. To the Gospels that bring us the story of the virgins waiting for the bridegroom to come to his chamber. To the very direct reference of the book of Revelation where the bride is called the Lamb's wife. Where the church is viewed as the bride of Christ. And the church should view herself as a bride awaiting the return of her groom, the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. So I began to consider the traits that a man looks for in a wife. We are, what are those qualities, those things that attract or repel a man from a potential bride? Then I took it one step further. What things will the returning Savior look for in the church that he's planning on taking for his bride? What are the things... What are those things that the Lord is looking for as the qualities that He finds attractive in His church? I have come tonight to the conclusion that if you want to know what characteristics the Lord is looking for in His eternal bride, you must discover those virtues that are found in women who are prominent in the Scripture. It, therefore, it begs the question... What qualities are emphasized in the heroines of the Word of God? If the Bible glorifies certain actions and qualities, then they that, that are indeed part of the tapestry, of the for, format, of the frame, of the bride that God will look for in His church. Can somebody say amen? You understand where I'm going here. Those values that are in the Scripture emphasized and accentuated are the assuredly standards that he desires to be exemplified by his church. So I began to do a survey of the scripture so I could see what those characteristics are that the bride glorifies in the women of the scripture. And a quick survey reveals several things. In the Bible, it was Sarah, the wife of Abraham, who was willing to leave her kindred and to embrace her promise. It tells us and teaches us that God is looking for a church who's willing to forsake all the world for him and for his promises. Rebecca 
when she was asked for a drink from I, by Isaac, she did not only offer a drink to Isaac, but she said, while you rest, I'll water your camels. So she went beyond merely what was asked of her and went, if you will, the extra mile. And the Lord is looking for a church that will not try to just find the minimum standard, but is willing to go beyond what is required to get closer to him. Amen. I found in the Bible the wife of Moses, Zipporah, who at the time when Moses, for some reason, refused to circumcise his son, the Lord was angry and was willing to destroy Moses. But Zipporah stepped in, circumcised the child through the foreskin at the feet of Moses and preserved the life of Moses and preserved deliverance for the children of Israel. So God is looking for a bride that will do what the word of God says, even if leaders won't. And even if her husband won't do the word of God, she'll do what God says, regardless of what her husband does. I'm talking about the qualities that God is looking for in his bride. I found Miriam who dared to sing even in a desert land and worship in a dry place until water came out of the ground. And likewise, God is looking for a church that doesn't need perfect circumstances to have a song, but can find a praise regardless of the dry spell, regardless of the desert place. I found the story of the Shunammite woman that when her world was crashing down around her, she mustered up faith to say it is well and God is looking for a church that even though it appears that everything around us is falling apart we can still have a positive attitude in the midst of our trial and in the midst of the storm we can still say it is well I found Rizpah who refused to let the buzzards devour her children, but beat them away until the harvest time. And God is looking for a church who refuses to let the world have her children and will stand strong, unyielding uh, until the harvest comes. That's the kind of church that God is coming back for. I found in the book... I found in my Bible a woman by the name of Ruth. And look, while I'm preaching this, all you women ought to be standing on your heads nearly. We're preaching about ladies tonight. Ruth, who was not too pretty to get her hands dirty in the harvest and work to gather grain in the field. Ruth, who understood that working in the harvest was not a compromise of her beauty. And he's looking for a church that does not feel like she has to compromise the beauty of holiness to work in the harvest field. I'm tired of seeing churches go charismatic and say we got to be relevant to the world. No, Ruth didn't sacrifice her beauty to be in the field. She took her beauty to the field with her. And God is looking for a church that will carry the beauty of living for God and walking with God into the field. I found in my Bible Hannah, who refused to accept barrenness and infertility, but prayed until the Lord gave her a child. And God is wondering if his bride will be like Hannah and refuse to settle for dead religion and barrenness, but will pray until God answers with revival and sends an anointing upon the church. I'm talking about the qualities that the Lord is looking for in a bride. I found Esther who boldly approached the king and declared life for her people and preserved a generation. And God is looking for a church that will not cower down in the face of persecution, but will boldly approach the king of kings and the Lord of lords and declare victory and life for our people. I found a woman in the book of Proverbs chapter number 31 who the Bible said was virtuous and trustworthy, a hard worker that honored the Lord. And I will tell you that God is looking for a church that will retain its virtue in a perverted generation that will not compromise our holy standard of living in the word of God. We will not become perverted just because the world's perverted. And just because the world's doing it doesn't mean we're doing it. And just because the world 
is in adultery and fornication and homosexuality. It doesn't mean the church is going to accept it because there is a virtuous woman and it's called the church of the living God. And it doesn't matter what Hollywood puts on the sitcom and it doesn't matter what happens in the world. The church, the bride of Christ is going to retain her virtue in this generation. I'm talking about the kind of bride that the Lord is coming back for. I found Mary, the mother of Christ, who offered her body as a living vessel for him to grow and to live in and risked all to nurture salvation. I found Mary, who sat at his feet, and Martha, who was willing to serve. I found a Syrophoenician woman who remained nameless but refused to lose her child. I found a woman who only had two mites, but she gave her all. I found Priscilla, who was willing to risk her life for the gospel. I found Lois and Eunice, who had unfeigned faith and passed it down to their next generation. I found the widow woman of Zarephath, who gave the very last handful of meal to the man of God, even when it was hurting. She gave it all. I found Abigail who honored the king and Rahab who protected God's servants and the woman with the alabaster box of ointment who overcame a bad past and a bad reputation, broke the box, washed his feet with her tears uh, and anointed them. Uh, And the Bible said that everywhere the gospel is preached that this woman would be talked about. I'm talking about the kind of church that the Lord is coming back for. I found a woman with an issue of blood who pushed through all the obstacles and everyone that was against her and everyone that was in her way to find him. I found a woman uh, who was so crooked uh, and so bent over that by the time it was all done she was worshiping and praising God. I declare boldly to you tonight that I want this church to be part of the bride of Christ. And if we're going to be the bride of Christ, we have to exemplify the qualities that the Bible said is in his bride. Are you hearing me tonight? Can somebody praise the Lord? Do you want to be in the bride? I said, do you want to be in the bride? Do you want to be in the church? That's what's in the church, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's in the bride. That's what the bride's made out of. That's how the bride lives her life. That's what the church does in a wicked and perverse generation. That's what the church is. I'm glad I'm in the church. You can talk bad about it. You can make fun of it. But I'd rather be in the church. I'd rather be in the bride. I'm ready to be in heaven. And I've got to be in the church to be there. But there's another quality in the scripture that the Bible tells us is a qualification for the bride. The text that we read in the passage of scripture of Judges tells of a time when the women of the tribe of Benjamin had been destroyed. And the men of the tribe needed wives to preserve their posterity and their inheritance. So they had to find them wives to preserve their future. There had to be a way that they could find a bride. So in Judges chapter 21 and verse 19, the elders of the land of Israel, they went to the men of of Benjamin and and they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh, yearly in a place which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem, on the south of Labona. There was a feast, they said, of the Lord. There was a feast of the Lord at Shiloh, a place where the tabernacle in the wilderness had been temporarily put up after they had come across from the, Red, from the Jordan River. They had set up the tabernacle at Shiloh, and Israel began to worship the Lord there. And every year they would go to Shiloh, and they would have this feast The feast is a word in the Hebrew that literally means a festival. It was a religious holiday where people would gather and come to Shiloh. And there they would worship the Lord and they would celebrate deliverance. And they would celebrate his blessings. And they would celebrate his goodness. And they would celebrate his grace. And they would celebrate his mercy. And when they would come to Shiloh to celebrate at the festival, when they would begin to worship God, the single, it, it was a, it was a, a feast and the single men of the tribe of Benjamin were instructed to go to Shiloh and to wait 
in the vineyards, around the house of God, around Bethel, which literally means the house of God. They were to go to the vineyards around Bethel, and they were to wait until the feast of Shiloh. When the music began to play, and they began to worship the Lord, according to non-biblical tradition, it was the married men who would step out first and begin to worship God. And the married men would worship, and then the married women would worship. And it was a sign that the mothers and the grandmothers and the fathers and the grandfathers were to be leaders in worship. It was the parents' job to worship first, to teach and show how and why they worship God. Amen. Amen. Let me tell every mother and father in this place that you should be the leader of your home. It was the married men who came out first. And let me tell every husband, every father, every grandfather that it is your job to be the leader of worship for your home. And we should be making things happen. I I looked across the altar this morning uh, at all the men that were out here worshiping God. And I asked Brother Walker, I said, how many churches do you go to where the men are the leaders in worship? And he said, not very many. Thank God we've got some dads that are willing to be worshipers. Thank God we have some granddads who are willing to lead in worship. Let me tell all the rest of us in this place, all the other dads, it's time for us to step up and to set the tone. It's time for every husband in this place to look across at their wife and say, I'm going to lead you in worship. I'm going to be a worshiper. I'm going to worship God. I'm not going to sit back and let somebody else do my job. It's my job to step out and to dance first. I wish I had a, I wish I had a father. I wish I had a husband. I wish I had a grandfather that would just stand right now and say, I'm going to be a worshiper because it's my job to lead my home. It's my job to lead my family. Come on. The Bible said if a man provide not for his house, he's worse than an infidel. Providing for your house is more than money. It's more than food and groceries. Uh, you got to spiritually provide an atmosphere of deliverance for your family. And if you don't, you're worse than an infidel come on men let's worship for a while come on men let's praise God for a while come on daddies and granddaddies and husbands let's be praisers let your children see your hands in the air let your baby see you worshiping God And then it wasn't long after that that the mothers and grandmothers stepped out. How about it, moms? How about it, grandmoms? Can you worship God? We're going to teach our young people that it's not just for young folks. It's not just for our teenagers. But we're going to lead our way in worship because it's time to worship God. Oh, God, I wish somebody hadn't praised in a while would shake something loose in their spirit right now and say, I'm the example. I'm the example. Hey, don't expect your kids to worship if you don't worship. Don't expect your kids to be faithful if you won't be faithful. Don't expect your kids to pray if you won't pray. You're the example. You got to step out first. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost moving up in this place right now. I feel the power of a living God in this place. This is more than emotionalism. This is more than just pre- than just priming a pump. But this is the power of God. And our kids have to have it. Oh, oh yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm a worshiper. I made up my mind. I'm going to be a praiser. I made up my mind. I'm going to love God. I made up my mind. My kids aren't going to have to wonder where I stand. They're not going to have to wonder how I feel about God. They're not going to have to wonder how I feel about church. This is the best thing that's ever happened in my life. This is the best thing I've ever seen. There's nothing like it. And I'm a worshiper. That's right. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. 
Go ahead. There's some bondages in people's families that God will break if moms and dads will begin to worship and praise God. It'll break some stuff in your home that will bring liberty and deliverance and freedom. Oh, God. I want the chains to fall off my family. If I want them to fall off, I got to step out first. I got to make the difference. I got to make the difference. I got to make the difference. I am a worshiper. I am a worshiper. I am a worshiper. I am a worshiper. I am not an observer. I am not somebody who stands on the sidelines. I am not somebody who critiques. I am a worshiper. That is my task. That is my job. That is my place. That is my station. I am a worshiper. Ah. Hey, I feel some chains starting to fall in some homes right now. There'll be liberty. I'm going to tell you, there'll be more joy in your home if you worship in the presence of God. It'll break bondages in your family. It'll set a tone and an atmosphere for your family if you will be a worshiper. I feel something happening in Bethlehem tonight. I said, I feel something happening in Bethlehem tonight. It's a generation rising up that says we will not lose our children. We will not lose our teenagers. We will not lose our babies. And, and, then, and then after the moms and dads got done, after the moms and dads got done, the next thing you knew, all the young single folks come out. And they began to worship God. The Bible said they danced in dances. It wasn't some sensuous, it, this was a feast of the Lord. It wasn't some sensuous, a, a licentious uh, 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 move and, 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 and sometimes in the world in, in the religious world you can't tell the difference between Holy Ghost worship and just going along with the beat but, but this was a this was a this was a, a worship unto God and, and the young women would come out and Benjamin a tribe of Israel the tribe who was to bring Saul to be king that tribe was told that when you See the maidens. It said, if they dance. Verse 21. If the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance. If they don't come out to dance, they're not worth your time. Let me tell all our young folks. Don't you be looking on the back rows of the deadheads. And that's no offense to our good parents that are back here. I'm talking to these young folks. Don't be looking in the deadhead section for your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You find them in an altar worshiping God. He said, if they come out to dance, if they don't come out to dance, don't mess with them. If they don't come out to worship, don't waste your time. If they're not interested in praising God, then you shouldn't be interested in them. But if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance, then you come out of the vineyard and you find you one that's dancing because the qualification for a bride is that the bride dances. I said a qualification for the bride is the bride dances. Dances. And let me tell you a qualification for the bride of Christ. It's not a dead church, a dried up church. Uh, hello? It's a church that knows how to worship God. And I've come to tell the devil that in Bethlehem, the bride still knows how to worship. I said the bride still knows how to praise him. The bride still, and when he comes back, when he comes back, He's coming back for a church that still worships and praises Him. (laughs) 
Hey, hey, I wonder, are we still an old fashioned apostolic worshiping church? Are we, are, or are we so caught up in our generation that we got to be moved? Oh, no, no, no. The bride still dances. I said the bride still dances. The bride still worships. The church is still full of the power of God because we know how to worship him. Now look here, Benjamin. Look here, Benjamin. If, if they come out to dance, Benjamin, don't marry wives who sit on the sidelines. Don't, don't, don't marry a bride that's too sophisticated for worship. Benjamin, don't you marry a bride that loves herself more than the God that she's supposed to be worshiping. Hello? Benjamin, don't choose a bride that isn't willing to step out and worship God. If you're going to marry a wife, make sure she's a worshiper. Because you need to make sure that your bride is at the dance. And I'm going to tell you, the Lord isn't coming back for a church that sits on the sidelines. Or is too sophisticated for a move of the Spirit. Or is too caught up in our own selves to give Him the very best we have. He's not going to choose a bride that's not willing to step out and praise Him. So may I tell you most assuredly that when the Lord comes back, He's look coming back for a church that is red hot on fire in worship and praising God. Not watered down by modern religion. Not watered down by dead religion. Not watered down by denominationalism. But a church that is on fire and says, I love you, God, more than I love anything else. I want to worship you more than I want anything else because the bride is at the dance. I, I know that denominations don't like what I'm preaching. I know that denominational preachers won't like what I'm preaching. I know that dead apostolics won't like what I'm preaching. But I will tell you that he will not come back and take unto himself a church that is dead, dry, boring, and carnal. His church, his bride will be at the dance. His bride will be at the dance. I said his bride will be at the dance. Psalms 149 said, Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in the king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him. And then it says, He will beautify the meek with salvation. The bride is at the dance. Look at somebody and tell them the bride still dances. Look at somebody else and tell them the bride still dances. And I'm in the bride, so I still show up to worship God. I still show up to praise Him. I still show up to glorify him because I'm in the bride and the bride still dances. Oh God in heaven. Oh God in heaven. I wish somebody'd shake the bands of dead religion off their hands tonight. I wish somebody'd shake the bands of carnality off of their soul. And I wish you'd say, Soul, you're gonna be a worshiper. You're gonna be a praiser. It doesn't matter what other people think, it doesn't matter what other churches teach. You are going to be a worshiper because the bride is at the dance. The modern church has placed self in the center of religion. We do what pleases ourselves. We worship as much as our self is comfortable worshiping. We pray when our self decides to pray. We give unless self has something else that it wants. We worship to the songs that self likes. We come when it's convenient for ourselves. And we stay at home when it's not convenient. There's a lot of modern churches that ought to take the name of the Lord off and put self on the sign. It's a spirit 
of the age uh, that is worshiping at the altar of self-gratification. Uh, we want God to do what we want him to do, when we want him to do it, the way we want him to do it. But I'm going to come to tell you, I've never found it hard to praise God when I got a financial blessing. I never had a problem praising God right after I got healed. I never had a problem praising God right after he met my need. But my question is not what about after you've been blessed, but what about when you're still waiting on the blessing and when you're still waiting on victory? What about when you're still in pain and you're still hurting uh, and you're still suffering? Uh, are you still going to be a worshiper? Because what if the Lord comes back while you're going through something? Uh, will you still be a dancer? What if he comes back when you're in a trial? Will you still be at the dance or will he have to look somewhere else? I'm telling you tonight that the bride is at the dance. Can I preach just a little while longer? Psalms 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord. Hello. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. What would happen if we decided as a congregation that we don't have to feel anything to worship a God that's worthy, whether I feel it or not. Because for me to worship him when I feel like it is for me to say that he is subject to what I'm facing and what I'm dealing with and that his, his worth depends on my mental attitude and his worth depends uh, on my frame of mind. But I will tell you, his value is not determined at all by my attitude or my frame of mind. So I must worship him at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times. At all times. There's two times to worship, when you feel him and when you don't. There's two times to leap for joy when you have it and when you don't. There's two times to run when you feel like it and when you don't. There's two times to shout when you feel like it and when you don't. There's two times to worship when you got victory and when you need victory because the bride still dances. It's not about how I feel. It's not about what's going on in my life. It's not about if he touches me. I will bless the Lord at all times times. Can, can I preach just a little bit more? Just, just, a, just, 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 a, just, a, just, a, like Brother Contreras said, just a tanchy. The Bible said in Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. It is not my praise will be in my mouth. It's His praise. The praise has never been mine to determine with it what I think it ought to have happened. It's never been my prerogative to determine because it's not my praise, it's His praise. It's not up to me to determine if he deserves a hand clap or not because it's not my praise. It's his praise. It's not up to me to say, well, I think I'll lift my hands right now. No, no, no. It's his praise. I've come to tell you, you do not have the prerogative to determine if you think he deserves to be praised or not. It's his praise. It's his praise. It belongs to him. And if I hold back his praise, I am a thief. If I hold back his praise, I am a robber. If I hold back his praise, I am robbing him of something that belongs to him. It is not mine. It is his. Therefore, I must give it. But he says, it's my praise, but you got to use your mouth to give it. I wish somebody opened their mouth right now and give him his praise. I said, I wish somebody would open. Look, if you need the Holy Ghost, if you'd open your mouth and give him his praise, the power of the Spirit's liable. If you needed a miracle right now, if you'd give him his praise, a miracle could happen in this place right now because it's his praise. It's his praise. It's his praise. Oh. 
Come on, come on. I'm preaching about an I I'm talking about an identity shift. I'm talking about a mind shift. I'm talking about a concept that needs to be in our mind that the bride still dances. The bride is at the dance. If the bride shows up, he said, I'm going to tell you, I wonder if miracles in this place tonight are being determined by who worships and who don't. I wonder if healing in this place tonight is being determined. I wonder if there's a financial blessing for somebody. And he's just waiting to see if you'll show up at the dance or not. I'm preaching about an old landmark. I'm preaching about an old landmark that was established in this church way back when Brother Alvy Bishop was here. And then Brother J.L. Pipkin. And then Brother, look, I, my, first, my, my memories of J. Frank Wilson I, were, were, were the first time I ever came here to preach. I remember him coming down the steps and he grabbed Elvis McMillan right there on the second row. It was a little bit dry that night. He went and grabbed him by the arm. And that 80-year-old man or whatever took off running around the building uh, and bringing this other fellow with him because he determined uh, that the bride is still at the dance uh, and it's time to worship. And I pray to God that we never get so fancy and so technologically advanced uh, and so religiously advanced that we forget that there is power in an old-fashioned shout-down. Hey! Oh, God. I wonder if we can still touch God when the music's not playing, when somebody's not t- singing at the best. I wonder if we can still find it in our heart because the bride is at the dance. I appreciate all you that are worshiping, but how about the rest of us? How about the rest of us? Uh, Is he still worthy? Is he still worthy? Is he still great and greatly to be praised? You, you, You may not know what's going on. You you may not have been here very much. You may be wondering what all this commotion is about. But let me tell you, I've been in a lot of services, Bishop, and you have too. When people come straight in, didn't know anything about Pentecost. All they knew is they liked what they felt. So they started doing what other people were doing. And without knowing anything about it, the Holy Ghost fell on them. And they found what they had been looking for. I'm going to tell you, you don't have to understand it. You don't have to know what it's all about. But if you'll respond and just say, Lord, I love you. I want everything you have for me. The Holy Ghost will be poured out in your life right there. The Holy Ghost is going to turn your life around, ma'am. The Holy Ghost is going to turn your life around. Because the bride, I'm telling you, there's a, I feel Holy Ghost revival. I'm I'm telling you, I feel something shaking right now. I feel something moving right now. I feel an old-fashioned Bethlehem worship service about to break out. I feel something about to rise up in the spirit. I feel an attitude shift. I feel a paradigm shift. Hey, the bride is at the dance. Has the bride showed up? Has the bride shown up tonight to worship the maker? Has the bride showed up tonight to praise him? Come on, I dare you to worship. I dare you to break out. I dare you to break out. I dare you to break out of the box that you built for yourself. I dare you to break out of the box that you built for yourself. I dare you to break out of the box of inhibition uh, that you built around yourself and say, I'm tired of being held back. I'm tired of being held back. I'm stepping out because the bride has shown up at the dance tonight. And when the Lord comes back, I want everything he's got for me. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's. There's a deliverance anointing. I'm going to tell you, the Lord's getting ready to turn your life around. The Lord's going to do great things in your life. You hear me? God's got great things for you. He's got a great blessing for you. He's got a great anointing for you. There's a deliverance in this place that only comes uh, with worship. With worship. The chains will be broken. The bands will be broken. The anointing will break free because the bride has shown up and there's power in praise. I'm telling you, the bride still knows how to dance. I said the bride still knows how to dance. I said the bride still knows how to dance. 
I wonder if somebody would just begin to worship him. I wonder if somebody would just begin to praise him. I wonder if somebody would just begin to express their love for the Savior, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. It's time. It's time. It's time for the bride to dance.